All right, here's the stock antenna that comes with the Midland Micromobiles, specifically the MTX276. It's a quarter wave with 20, almost 20 feet of RG174. Now, if you look at the losses at the GMRS frequencies, this is a, I think this is on the order of 3.3 dB of loss, okay? And that's gonna hurt performance, um, basically, for transmit power, you're losing half. So instead of 15, if you're even getting 15 out of the transmitter, you're talking seven and a half watts coming out of this antenna. What I discovered in another video I made that the MTX getting 15 watts off a cigarette adapter is kind of pushing it. I got 13 out of one of my outputs and I got 10 on the other one. So if I was getting 10 out of the outlet, I'm only getting five out of here. And it also cuts your ears in half. You're only hearing half as good as you would if you had no loss. So let's consider unity gain on quarter wave, which is a common acceptable reference point. And so you get negative three dB. It's 3.3, but I'll be generous and say, you know, just three. Here is the radio on its 20 foot stock antenna i don't have a you know, continuous signal from somebody where i'm at right now so i'm just going to fire up a weather station and you can hear it's staticky so let's change out the antenna pull this out and let's put in another antenna. Cleared up quite a bit. From 4 to about what? Was it 4, 3 or 4? It went to like 8, I think. Less static? What's the difference? Let me turn this off so I can compete with it. The difference is RG58, about 17 feet of it versus... 20 feet of RG174. This translates to about a 1 dB loss versus 3.3 dB. Okay, so I've already gained 2 dB on signal. And this is on a Browning BR450, which is a 5 8 over 5 8 collinear, which I just tuned for GMRS. And also tunes up on ham. This is a 5.5 dB gain antenna. If you take into account the one one dB of loss on the, uh, on the coax, now this is a four and a half dB of gain, and this is a negative three dB loss. So you're looking at a difference of eight and a half dB on signal and transmit. Also, this here five and a half dB will will uh, give quite a bit more power out. Supposedly. So if, it, if you get, let's just say we're getting 10. So we're getting 10, you get 10 watts at transfer, you get five here. Over here, 10, 20, you get double it for 3 dB, double it again for 6 dB. So 40 watts of power. So 10 versus 40 watts of power, four times the power. And if you can get 15 watts out of this, or 40 or 50, all the merrier, you multiply that times four on this antenna. That is the difference once again. And come back and listen to this. We'll go backwards just to make sure that there was no atmospheric change all of a sudden that screwed it up. Hold still. Four bars of static. Feet with a dominant period, eight seconds. A light stop on the intracoastal waters. There you go. Monday night, becoming south after midnight. I know for some people getting are new to radio and getting getting into it that you probably didn't budget for a an antenna when you got this radio because it came with one. And it will work 
pretty good. I did test the SWR on the small antenna that came with it, and it's flat. It's flat, and a quarter wave is not bad. It really isn't. But when you, when you couple it with this long lossy coax, it's just too much to get any good range. So if you're getting no range out of this thing, I would highly suggest upgrading the antenna. And I also suggest because GMRS is in a real popular commercial band of UHF, there's a lot of antennas out there at good prices you can choose from. You don't have to stick to any particular brand. Um, Larson, Laird, they're very good brands and they're good stuff. You have um, Tram and Browning are good in the, uh, the budget range. They do ham and commercial stuff. Um, that up there, Browning, the, the 58 to 58 up top there is a it's a budget one. I think I forget how much it cost. I think it was twenty-five dollars when I bought it. A layered of the same design would be about fifty. It would probably last longer because it's better made elements. I don't have a layered in a collinear fashion. They have little whips and they seem to be you know pretty well built. You can't go wrong with a layered or a Larson. If you get one for four fifty to four seventy, you're gonna to have to cut it. You probably have to cut it because GMRS is in the 462 467 area so you would need to trim it a bit to get it to resonate get a, get a mount I would recommend get an NMO mount and then you can pick and choose which antenna you want if you get a mount that has the antenna built into it like this it's built into it you can't change it out you can't swap it out and if you decide to change antennas you're gonna have to run rerun new coax into your vehicle and that can be a pain so if you get a mount even if it's a mag mount but if, if not a mag mount you can get a lip mount or something that tight clamps to a bracket of some sort you can leave the mount on there and then you can take the antenna off put another one on and go so I'm converting over to NMOs um, I've used PLs before they're real popular in the ham world but not much outside of it. Most commercial antennas are, are NMO. And that's where I'm going because the commercial antennas are good quality and they're affordable because they're made pretty good volume. So that's what I recommend. It doesn't have to be this particular one, but at least a 5.8. Um, I would suggest going to 5 8 if you can fit it. 5 8 this is 6 inches on a quarter wave. A 5 8 would be about 12 or 13 inches tall. That's not really, that's not very tall. And most vehicles, you could probably get into a garage with just a straight, a plain old 5 8 wave. The next logical step is the 5 8 over 5 8 I know this is a lot of antenna for some people, but, you know, if you're wanting, if you're wanting to squeeze out the range, this is the way to go. Hope it's been helpful to you and have a good day.